Opposition Chief Whip and Kira Municipality MP Ibrahim Semujunganda wants government to cut its expenditure on political leaders and public servants. He proposes that government stops spending on buying, maintaining and servicing public vehicles. Parliament has already granted permission to Semuju to table the motion proposing that public servants and politicians get vehicles on loan and pay back within four years from monthly deductions from their salaries and allowances. You are a minister, you will decide which vehicle you want to drive. We give you a loan and tax free and you buy your vehicle. And this has many advantages. First, you will never abuse a vehicle that is yours, that you own. You will never use it to ferry charcoal, you will never use it to ferry bricks. His justification is that government expenditure on vehicles exponentially increased in the 2017-2018 financial year. The total expenditure on travel inland was 283 billion shillings. Government spent 131 billion shillings on fuel, lubricants and oils. While vehicle maintenance cost 75 billion shillings, 114 billion shillings was spent on buying new vehicles. According to the public service standing orders, a public officer at the level of director, commissioner and head of department shall be entitled to a chauffeur-driven vehicle maintained at a government expense. But Samuju's motion proposes to exempt the president, vice president, prime minister, speaker of parliament, deputy speaker, chief justice, deputy chief justice and the principal judge Due to the security concerns and national significance, these offices symbolize. Those ones you can buy the vehicles, but also must put a limit, uh, a ceiling um, on, 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 the, on the size of the fleet. Instead of a president riding in a convoy of 50 vehicles, by policy we may provide 15 vehicles for the convoy of the president. If he wants to have a convoy of 100 vehicles, the responsibility of the extra vehicles now will uh, rest on his shoulders. State Minister for Housing, Dr. Chris Bariomunsi, who is also the Acting Information Minister, says government would study Samuju's motion before taking a position. The motion to me is in good faith, and once he tables it, then we shall have a, a frank discussion in Parliament, and eventually we shall look at it as government. They are now about to begin presenting budgets for various sectors. So we must ensure that we don't waste public resources. We don't pay people higher and then continue giving them privileges as if this country is for a handful of people. Some members of parliament expressed reservations on the motion. Public servants, especially those who are involved in upcountry or field work, they too need this cause. So I see no reason why anyone should have issues. Civil servants, they are appointed depending on term and, terms and conditions of appointment. And if they are appointed, they are supposed to be facilitated to do a job. So maybe it needs a thorough, thorough analysis and it goes in a reform to be really seriously implemented. We also sought out the views of the common person on the matter. Because they are also citizens, they should pay these taxes in that for, them to, for, for, the, for their country to develop, they have to pay these taxes. And they have to pay these taxes through these loans. It's more case about the Jeko. Says about what they take a move, but take a move about our one seat. Katebana na about Jako, or whatever now called about the Mirimoja government, no Kutuki is a million song as a government, is the Yambaba na Uganda. The motion comes at a time government is searching within the budget for 1.6 trillion shillings to raise the salaries of some public servants who have been agitating and going on strike over poor pay. What remains to be seen is whether members of parliament will support this motion which is directly affecting their welfare and secondly whether government will have the goodwill to implement it. Habat Zewa, NTV, Kampala.